Good oh. morning, everybody. We're on. Here we are. We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. Morning. I think it's Wednesday. Welcome <laughs> to another edition of Bedhead Diaries. Every time I use this mug, I read a Shakespearean insult I haven't read before. This one's like highly fed and lowly taught. I'll tell you what that means exactly. Fat and stupid. That's terrible. <laughs> highly fed and lowly taught. The particular complex that we're talking about today is social anxiety. Shy is like way down here. Right. And I think everybody experiences the low end of this, which is like <laughs> uh, meeting a new person. <laughs> I don't do that. Like you meet a new person and you're like, oh. They're so cute, but I can't talk to what them. What are they gonna be like? And you have like some kind of anxiety. I think that's. That's also where crush happens. So oh. I'm not talking about meeting somebody that you're crushing on. I'm just talking about meeting anybody new, any new but situation. But if you can't really communicate with them, then that would be the anxiety element. Right, anxiety with meeting somebody new, like the, the oh, I'm not sure what's gonna happen to, all the way to I can't leave my house. Rejection and judgment, here we go again. Anxiety. Are the, elements of social anxiety. Social anxiety is just an amplified fear of judgment and fear of rejection. So again, it's about analyzing where that comes from. Mm -hmm. It probably comes from a belief like a parent might have like been trying to instill some fear in you, intentional or not, like, oh, what are they going to think of you? They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. Adam Sandler. I don't remember the movie. Waterboy? I think it was Waterboy. I think okay. it was his mom. So, I mean, that that's an example of a judgment. Social anxiety. That kind of comment from a, a parent or a, a caretaker is enough to, like, create a complex in a child for their life. Long time, yeah. So do some self-discovery work about where you think those false beliefs have come from. The fear of judgment, fear of rejection. They probably come from a caretaker. And the caretaker's attempt... To, to protect you, you from their perceived fears. Out in the wild. So their their beliefs that they put on you are an attempt to, to protect you in some way. Granted, they probably are not coming from this is a real threat. It's yeah, those kind of threats. They're are, all screwed up. They're coming from the parents' unresolved fears that probably aren't healthy either. Their fears aren't relevant in your world and right. in your life. So You've got to reassess and reevaluate what's right for you versus what you've been taught. Right. And talking about this particular element brings us to another part of this, which is I can't go out into public because everybody's energy is going to get on me. So very quickly, I'm going to tie that one into the primal response. It's a threat. You've been trained that this is a threat. The way that your mind has developed this is that it's a threat to your energy. So there you go. Primal threat. Got to protect myself. Can't go out in public because you didn't necessarily have the tools to handle that threat in public. So it's not a threat. Stay in your center, realize that you're safe. For people that talk about energy work and are familiar with that and I'm an empath and all of that stuff, that's kind of another way to look at social anxiety. The same it's thing. It's the same kind of social anxiety. You're afraid of judgment, of threat, or rejection. of rejection. With social anxiety, here's a few tips. Here's a few strategies. Okay, if you have social anxiety and you're going to be in a social situation, it, it doesn't help the way you think it is. It's just like soldier on. Okay, I'm going to go to this party of social anxiety. I'm just going to, here we go, deep breath. I'm just going to like gonna whoo, charge through it. I'm going to get over my fear. That's the worst strategy. Because in that element, you're already operating from a subconscious you're fear. You're amping up the fight or flight before you even get there by like, okay, we're going to just do this. Um, but subconsciously, what you're thinking is, not only are they all going to laugh at you, but they're all out to get you. And they're going to eat your face off. So you got to turn that around. <laughs> So the best strategy is to do some pre-visualization. So visualize yourself, maybe a week going into an event if you have one, going into the room, being excited, being happy. Who am I going to meet? It's an adventure. Approaching it with a positive energy, a calm, centered neutrality. So by doing the visualization of, of making it, uh, you're changing the emotion to the, to the situation. So if you're already prone to a primal reaction in a social situation that puts you on guard. You gotta retrain. And you've gotta do it little bits at a time. By the way, that is what social anxiety is. It's a primal reaction. And slowly you're gonna see your responses change over time in a social in a situation that's anxious for you normally. So the strategy here is to pretend like you are a lion and you are assessing the room. And this is what we call stepping into your alpha mentality, which is the, I know I could eat your face off, but I don't have to. You're not a threat. 
So this is something you can work with in your visualizations. You can mm-hmm. just go totally primal with it and like, I'm the lion, I'm the king of the beast. I'm going into the room, assessing the situation. Who are the people I want to meet in this room? Let me kind of take ownership of the room. Let me see who's who, what's what. Bring the control back to Bring you. Bring the control back to you. So imagine yourself basically as the one who owns the room. Another strategy that people like to, to use for social anxiety when they're trying to um, also a good one for networking is find out who the most important people in the room are or and who are the leaders or the, right. the, who are the pack leaders and go and introduce yourself. That might be the hostess or the host. Go introduce yourself and be like, hi. Because when you do it that way, you are not only becoming up in the, in the top tier of who owns the room, you're also finding friends that help you to realize that you're already in control anyway. Instead of like, oh, let me go meet some of these people and work my way up. Just go straight to the person. Go up and like pay them a compliment. Hi, I'm so-and-so. I really enjoy your book. Once you meet the person who you perceive is the most important person in the room. It calms down Everybody, that Everybody else is just easy. They're just people. Uh, well, the same thing goes with a person in a social anxiety situation that feels a threat to you. Be the bigger person, go up and say hi. Also good to remember that a lot of the people in the situation party have a lot of insecurities that they are hiding. Everybody's got insecurities to some degree or another. It's hard so, to see other people's insecurities. Right, because you can't see past your own. Um, what this does though is it allows you the freedom to face the threat head on. Calms down that primal brain so you're not in that state of fight or flight. Yes.